My name is Daniel Xu. I'm an architect and I was the design director on the Automobility Project. My role in the U Plus concept was basically to take Daniel, the principal concept designer, his CAD designs and transform it into something that could actually be built. My name is Philippa Tumawene. My role was to design and create a process through which to think speculatively about mobility in uh, Africa, but specifically within Cape Town. The Automobility was a result of a rapid studio that we held across the architecture, planning and geomatics departments and students from kind of an interdisciplinary uh, range came together and speculated about mobility, transportation and through a series of experts kind of brought in different prompts to you know, facilitate various discussions that ended up in these different concepts. We were of course very excited to be involved in this because it gave us an opportunity to get students who were involved in urban studies at the ACC to work closely with students in architecture and planning, but also in engineering. And we saw this as an approach outside of the formal curriculum for them to learn each other's disciplines, but also to work collaboratively and produce some of their best insights and in design. Philip and I, um, along with Hitton and Edgar, kind of undertook a process to do what we call design development. And we took the concept of the monowheel and we developed it into kind of a concept in which was made out of different parts. Basically an image that you see all over Africa which is um, the tyre, so children playing with a tyre. So the idea is through a speculative process is how to take that image which is very common across this continent and, and in the place that we are, which is Cape Town, and how do you imaginatively we start seeing that? So you imagine that as a child you play with a tire and as you grow up you start to move and that tire becomes the way through which you move and navigate your city and your space. With the Art and Mobility Project, we had already a concept design from Daniel and from the UCT team. So it was very much a case of trying to figure out how this thing is going to be built. We kind of tried different iterations of what the aesthetic could be. We wanted it to stand out, speak about African flair, um, kind of speak to the people and the kind of different iterations that it could have. The processes we used for this project were uh, steel fabrication, um, i.e. welding, outsourcing some design uh, files to a laser cutter that was then bent. Another process was thermoforming, which involves plastic forming, where a sheet of plastic is formed over a mold and you get, on this project, was the armadillo shell. The foam tires we cut by hand with a grinder and sanded them to give them texture and uh, character. LED lighting and some electronics we put in just to, to give it, you know, just to make the whole thing pop. And then there was also vinyl graphics on the side. And so it ended up being, you know, quite a bold, a bold red with these interesting patterns that we kind of developed together. And it ended up being quite this industrial, grungy, put together artifact that speaks to a lot of these ideas that we played with. I think the positive response to this concept, one, is that we actually went beyond the process of imagination and speculation and we tried to put that in the making process. So the making process of the U Plus was also quite a creative thing. We took an imagination around mobility, we speculated what that could look like within our context and then we carried on that creativity and speculation through the making process. The value of speculative design is that it really allows students to wrestle with what is, I think, the most important skill and capability and that is to be rooted in a scientific discipline and a practice driven expertise whatever form of design that might be but at the same time to recognize the limits of science and the limits of knowledge especially if you want to develop innovations that can respond to society and context and more importantly if those responses also take into account the limits of the political economy in other words the ways in which formal politics, governance systems, and various regulatory instruments militate against solutions for the urban poor. And what the students then do with speculative design is they learn to bridge these worlds, to respond to context, but to also draw on the best of their disciplines, and then bring their own creativity and aesthetics and innovation into the frame, and if you will, almost give an artistic expression to that. And I think speculative design is really the only means to achieve that rich outcome. Exhibitions are powerful because they allow you to tell a story that is really compelling, but that is rooted in evidence, in science, in data, 
and in the process connect into something personal for people but then challenge them to go beyond their own limits. This is a small part of that exhibition. It's called The Futures of Mobility and it's different schools speculating with the idea of what we're going, how we're going to be moving in the future. And it's now moved to Germany as a smaller part of the initial exhibition to try and get people thinking about how we're going to move without damaging the earth, without um, extracting even more resources from the earth. It was first of all amazing to see it within the Guggenheim. I mean, it's an incredible building. Frank Gehry is, you know, world renowned. And to kind of see the different iterations and certainly quite interesting to see it juxtaposed with vintage cars and the other universities' interpretations. And I think it's certainly one of the most unique things I've ever built. And I'm very happy that it's getting a second home. Mm -hmm.